So the course is uh, coded 415. So this is a 5G mobile network systems approach. So this course is uh, offers an in-depth exploration of the fifth mobile network that the including the underlying principles and key technologies. So it also includes the definition what is 5G and then what are the performance targets of 5G, uh, the spectrum of 5G services and techniques. And also we will introduce uh, who is 3GPP and what are the different standards um, uh, included in the 3GPP uh, organization and the overall 5G systems and the functional uh, split options. And this also includes the relationship between the 5G and the open run. Okay. <clears throat> so, so the next uh, slide would be uh, showing the the mobile coverage sample from NPERF. So this maps give only the sample coverage. It's not the entire or the uh, a complete status of each operator's uh, network. So it's just a sample coverage because the data coming from the uh, willing subscribers are only mapped here if they allow the their data to be to be published in their uh, in their servers so if the subscriber is not uh, activating or not uh, subscribing to this uh, to this uh, activity uh, his or her data will not be included so that's why it's not the entire uh, coverage uh, um status of each operator so the image that you show uh, that you see is a series of maps uh, that depicts the cellular network coverage across Philippines and provided by different mobile network operators. Uh, in From the left side, you can see the smart, the smart, the globe, and the DITO. And then each map is color-coded to represent the various generations of mobile connectivity that is available. So that is ranging from 2G, uh, 3G, 4G, and uh, 5G technology. So in this example, on the smart mobile map, there's a dense concentration of 4G and some 5G coverage in major urban centers like Metro Manila, Cebu, and Davao with widespread of 2G, 3G coverage across the archipelago. So this indicates a mature network with extensive reach, so albeit with the varying levels of service indicative of the transitioning phases of technology. However, on the globe uh, map, you will uh, see a similar pattern of coverage with robust 5G, a 4G presence and emerging 5G spots in metropolitan areas. So the network's reach extends to less populated areas and then suggesting that the globe's commitment to nationwide connectivity. However, on DITOS map, you can see here on the right side, uh, it displays a sparser distribution of network coverage with a focus on key areas. So being the newest player, uh, its uh, coverage is currently more limited compared to the established network like Smart and uh, Globe. But it highlights the potential for new infrastructure and growth in the Philippine telecommunication landscape. So as you can see, no, uh, in these three maps, uh, 5G is already here. So both uh, uh, all of the operators are, are deploying 5G already. That's why... Uh, in the context as well of open run, 5G is one of the topics that 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 is uh, also involved. Um, so before we go to 5G, let's talk about the evolution of mobile communication. How did we arrive uh, in 5G now? So you can see here uh, that in 1980s, uh, the era of mobile communication began with 5G, uh, 1G. So it it was an analog system that allowed basic voice communication and the coverage and mobility were limited and devices were a little bit bulky. So the uh, prominent technology here is the AMPS or the Advanced Mobile Phone System was a typical standard for this generation. And then followed by 2G uh, that, was, that introduced a digital revolution in mobile communications uh, it improves voice quality and increased uh, coverage and introduced text messaging capabilities. And then for 3G, um, paved the way for the mobile data and internet access. So with data speed re reaching to up to 2 Mbps at that time, but now we see 3G are uh, uh, getting up to 14 Mbps or sometimes 21 Mbps. 
And then in the 2010, we saw the advent of 4G, which provided the mobile broadband with high-speed data. So it started uh, a target of 100 Mbps that time. And now there are uh, networks in 4G or LTE advanced that reaches uh, uh, 1 gigabit per second. And the most recent uh, development uh, happened in 2020s, which uh, introduced the 5G. So it's characterized by its extreme speed, connectivity, and reliability. And that's just an incremental upgrade. No? It's a platform designed for future innovation, including IoT, uh, autonomous vehicles, and other more. So by the way, what is 5G? So in, in this course, we will be uh, discussing more details about 5G, what are the different use cases, and then what are the different applications, and on the intricacies also of the architecture of 5G and how uh, we will do the, dis the disaggregation of the system and then uh, utilize the uh, the implementation of Open RAN in 5G. So we we'll start with the use cases of 5G. So when we talk about 5G, 5G is the fifth generation of mobile communication. And it's the latest iteration of the mobile network that uh, we use to connect uh, our smartphones and other devices to the internet. And it also promises to be faster, more reliable, and more efficient than the previous generations of wireless technology. And with the potential to support a wide range of new applications, as you can see here in the slide. So overall, there are three use cases uh, that demonstrate a diverse range of applications that 5G can support. Uh, from the enhanced mobile broadband, or the EMBB, to the uh, massive machine type communications and ultra reliable and low latency communications. So the, as 5G networks continue to, to be deployed around the world, we can expect to see even more exciting and innovative applications that can take advantage of this advanced wireless technology. But let's start with the enhanced mobile broadband. Okay. So the enhanced mobile broadband, also known as the EMBB, uh, it's one of the primary use cases of 5G. This is to provide faster, more reliable, and more efficient mobile broadband services. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. So with its high uh, uh, data transfer rates and lower latency, 5G is able to support uh, much faster download and upload speed. So it allows... Uh, a uh, user to stream high quality video okay and download large files and browse the internet with minimum or minimal delay and then EMBB is particularly useful for users who demand high bandwidth uh, applications like uh, virtual and augmented reality gaming and multimedia next in line is the massive machine type communications or MMTC so MMTC is another important use case of 5G uh, and this is the ability to support a large number of connected devices. That's why we have the term massive. And um, 5G uh, enabled the creation of uh, smart cities using this uh, use case. And smart homes and smart factories are among the other applications. And also MMTC can support mission critical services such as the remote monitoring of medical equipment, in, in our hospitals and real-time asset tracking. Then we move on to ultra-reliable and low-latency communications or URLLC. So this is a third use case for 5G and this has the ability to provide ultra-reliable and low-latency communications for applications that require um, high reliability and low-latency. So this includes like the autonomous vehicles or self-driving cars, okay, industrial automation, and uh, can um, and remote surgery. Where's the remote uh, remote surgery? Okay. Uh, this is an application that requires the smallest delay or uh, no interruption uh, needed, no, in our network. So with its low latency and high reliability, uh, 5G can enable these uh, types of mission critical applications as we as we call it and providing the speed and responsiveness needed for the time 
for the real time uh, operations okay so th- that that is the uh, overview of uh, of 5G and i know you will be more excited if you will join us in our uh, session by next year actually the the the, the main purpose of this uh, of this session is to uh, get you uh, on board again on the upcoming sessions that we will be conducting by next year okay so more on about 5G and then uh, about the different applications of 5G so we have we have this in 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 our in our courses and then you can see the relationship of these foundational courses like the radio access network the open flow sdn nfb the cloud and edge computing and the 5G